Authorities are working to identify the next of kin after a skeleton is discovered near Gateway. The Mesa County Sheriff's Office says the skeleton could be the answer to a missing persons case. It involves a Mesa County man who went missing more than 20 years ago. Authorities say a hiker discovered the remains Thursday near the John Brown Canyon Road off of Highway 141. It was partially inside of a car at the bottom of a canyon. Foul play was never suspected in the man's disappearance. Theory 1, suicide due to cancer pain. Theory 2, OSS CIA post-war Nazi hunting. Theory 3, killed by big oil to stop his invention. Let there be no doubt, big oil is very, very big. In 2021, they raked in $110 billion in profits, and in 2022, they more than doubled that. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, in the early 1980s, oil hit an all-time high of $35 a barrel. Converted for today's money, that's about $112 a barrel. But in the late 80s, fortunes would turn for the oil industry and prices would plummet, setting off an oil glut. And right here in Mesa County, that boom and bust effect was amplified by what is now known as Black Sunday. I remember that day, May 2nd, 1982. Everything was going like, like it should. Everybody we was in a good mood. And then uh, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Pete Crows from the Denver Post walked up to me and said, he said, what do you think about Exxon Pornhub and the Colony Project? We're going to lay off 2,000 people tomorrow. Yeah. It was just a shock. It was just took us so back. And then the rest of the day I don't remember because because it was just chaos. We had to run back and open the bar, which we didn't normally do on Sunday. And here they came, man. It was just you know, there were fights, there were people crying, there were people yelling and angry. And uh and just the rest of the day was a total blow. It was a it was a crazy time back then. Um, you know, the sad thing is is these people were guaranteed seven years. And they didn't get their seven years, and they must have all lost their jobs. But it wasn't just the oil companies who lost everything in the shale bust of 82. In fact, many, many locals lost everything. My stepfather, Harold Easton, who later in life became the principal of Broadway Elementary and a well known fixture in the community, he lost three quarters of a million dollars and his chance at being a real estate tycoon. When the shale bust hit Mesa County, he had three quarters of a million dollars worth of real estate. That all crumbled overnight. In fact, that shale bust turned many Mesa County residents into very, very desperate people. At the tail end of episode one, I dropped some hints for the audience. I dropped the images of Rudolph Diesel, Stanley Meyer, Louis Le Prince, and even William King Hale. I did that for a reason. 
And now it's time to talk about them each in more detail. Everyone has heard of the diesel engine and diesel fuel, but have you heard of Rudolf Diesel? He vanished September 29, 1913 at sea, allegedly at the hands of German intelligence. Stanley Meyer invented the world's first water-fueled car. He was a Christian man and attributed all of his progress to God. On March 21, 1998, Stanley was poisoned in public while dining with Belgian investors. Louis Le Prince created motion pictures before Thomas Edison. On 16 September 1890, he boarded a train in Paris and was never heard from again. And if you harbor any doubt that people will kill for oil money, meet William King Hale. In 1921, he ordered the murders of over two dozen people, including his nephew's wife's sister and mother, her cousin, another sister, and brother-in-law, all for a mere $500,000 a year in oil head rights. His trying to come up with a cheaper, better way of transportation with using magnets. And But I didn't really know he was doing that or into that until he sat us down and explained it all to us. Oh, okay. So he did, there was a moment where he sat you down and he felt like you yes. were ready to know. But mm -hmm. okay. I do remember that being. You know what, though? I regret not giving a lot more attention, attention to that. I really, because of our relationship in the distance, I wish that I had respected that part of his ingenuity and his talent, but um, you probably understand and know more about it than I do. My mom is being humble, but the truth is I've been through Grandpa's notes many times. And while I consider myself to be a fairly intelligent person, I simply lack the pre-existing mechanical knowledge to take his notes and envision the final product as a working unit. In fact, even Grandpa Ron knew that this was such a big project that he simply couldn't do it by himself. He actually sought the assistance of mechanical shops and people with expertise in prototyping new designs in an attempt to make something of this invention. This was a real risk, because at the time, this kind of technology was very much cutting edge and represented the potential for a major gain in wealth for anybody who controlled it. It also represented a major threat to the oil industry. It was for that reason that Grandpa Ron entered into non-disclosure agreements with his partners uh, had a secret list of names of people with copies of the blueprints, pieces of the blueprints, and so on and so forth. But that was the early 1980s, and this is 2023. And we live in an age of electric cars. Hell, we live in an age of flying electric cars. It's a very, very different landscape from that which my grandfather faced. And anyone who would have wanted to benefit from stealing this technology would have already done so by now. And if the technology was a failure, they would have already failed to do so by now. Point being that I've got nothing to lose by showing you these drawings and these documents. Even if Grandpa might have lost everything, for creating them in the first place. Made his concern that somebody was trying to hurt him or might try to hurt him. Yes. That, Dad was not a paranoid person. So I do not ever remember him coming home and being paranoid about being hurt in all my growing up, my youth. I do remember, though, his comments about big oil, big um, car companies, or I don't even know how to describe them, and that they probably would do, could, would, could do something to prevent him from inventing something that would save on gas and make us less dependent upon other oil, oils from other countries. Okay. 
Invention to be known as PAV unit. To whom it may concern, January 12, 1981. This invention is the sole property and idea of Ronald D. Vasey, who has the only complete set of plans, blueprints, if any, and notes. Also, any models that may be in existence. There are also five copies of above drawings that are semi-shredded, jigsaw puzzle fashion, mixed and divided among ten people around the world and in the U.S., each person having half of complete set. Each of the ten people have approximately half of the drawings, which can mean nothing to them without the other half. None of the ten people know one another, nor the nature or value of their half of the puzzles. All have been instructed to store above in safe places and await further instructions. In the event that anything happens that is of a suspicious or deliberate nature to me or any of my family, such as false arrest, threats, or injury, etc., two more people have a list of above people and will instruct above puzzle holders to contact one another, resulting in exposure of invention to the world. Also upon my death, my family will inherit drawings and decide whether to expose or hold back exposing same. Um, I inherited it from, from him essentially, but it had to have been passed down through you as a custodian, right? Mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, did you do anything with it in that time where you just sat on it? Just... I'm afraid that I didn't. I regret it, but it's like you looking at me thinking, oh man, here she goes again, or I don't know that I, like I just said, gave him the respect that he might have deserved had I paid more attention to it. I did listen to what he had to say, but then again, I don't remember much of what he had to say. There's no way to my knowledge, none of the ten people, nor the two with the list of those ten people, were ever contacted or activated the puzzle or anything whatsoever. It raises some questions for me and you might be asking after what I just told you about having nothing to gain or lose why am I doing this now it's because I want justice my grandfather deserves justice the world deserves Mesa County Grand Junction we all deserve to know what happened to this World War II veteran who made this place his home and then died here in such a strange, mysterious, and unexplained way. And it's not just the puzzle piece holders or the list holders. My mom knew about this briefcase and literally did nothing with it. Mesa County Sheriff's Office was aware of the letter and did nothing with it. Everybody just assumed and jumped to the conclusion that this was a suicide based on past events. Totally disregarding this letter, this call for help from my grandpa Ron. Your father was so worried that somebody would come after him for his invention that he had the plans cut up into jigsaw puzzle pieces according to the way he wanted it, jigsaw style pieces. Uh, and he gave different sets of these pieces to, I have here a handful, but I remember now from looking back in the briefcase, it was 12 people. Ten, okay. 10 people got pieces of the puzzles and two people got the list of names of people with the puzzle pieces. Uh, so 12 all together in, uh, in addition to him. But uh, so he had them cut up into puzzle pieces and he gave different sets of these pieces to a handful of trusted associates around the world. One of these associates lived in Australia. And uh, so the question is, do you recall letting me use your phone to call international long distance as a child to speak with him? I barely remember that, Justin. I really, your memory of that has got to be more detailed than mine. Okay. I, um, do you remember what he said? I do, and I, I just wanna say thank you for letting me make that call because that was in the, 
90s, early 90s, when international long distance was an actual thing and you had to pay a lot of money for it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you let me do that because it meant that much to me. Um, but unfortunately, the person that I got a hold of told me that they had never, they did attempt a prototype, but that they never got it working. And he left it at that. No mention of what this supposed list of people and how they were supposed to activate if something happened to ground flight. It was just, we never got it working, that's that. He was friendly, mm -hmm. but that wasn't very informative. Well, yeah. Ten or twelve people to split that among. I don't remember ever also seeing a list with everyone's name on it, or I really don't remember him saying there were that many people. I do remember him saying he had shared parts of the plans with people, but specifics I don't remember. Okay, since your husband was a very gregarious person, a people person, um, and so we would joke about how I know where we would go in town, he would see somebody he knows, mm -hmm. that's the kind of person he was. Yes. In order to have 10 associates, trusted associates around the world, you would almost have to be that kind of person or be part of a very tight-knit group. So I, did, did you ever know your father as being that kind of person, a people person? He was, he was good with people, but okay. he was good with people to, where, to the point where I felt he was a phony at times when I would introduce my friends to him. He would just be as nice as he could be and it would not seem normal or natural to me, but he was good with people when he had dealings with them. Okay. Uh okay. This is the first test run for audio. I've been working on this film since 2018. That was five years after he was located by Mesa County Sheriff. And it's now 2023, a full decade since his remains were found in the bottom of John Brown Canyon. It's been quite a journey doing the research and telling the story from my grandpa Ron but I think perhaps the parts of the story that I'm unable to tell, those will be some of the most compelling. This includes the inability to speak with the gentleman who actually found Grandpa's crash site while hiking. He has only been named once in the media and he actually has made it pretty clear that he wants to be left alone. He doesn't want to speak to me for this documentary. He doesn't want to be any you know, further identified for whatever reason. Initially, he claimed it was because uh, he was down in that canyon illegally searching for native artifacts like arrowheads. Uh, but for whatever reason, he doesn't want to talk. But it certainly doesn't end there. There are people who apparently knew about Grandpa's crash site and never told anyone anything which is a huge red flag for me. Uh, and then there's Mesa County Sheriff's Office. I have reached out to them since 2018, asking them for more information, asking them why five pages were missing from the police report. And they've been as unhelpful as they could possibly be. Not only will they not respond to me and arrange a sit down for, for an interview for this film, but they play games. I mean, there's five pages missing from the police report. They're numbered, but on social media they pretend like it's impossible. They don't pretend. They literally claim it's impossible to know what pages are missing because I got my copy of the report from a third party. Well, that third party was his daughter, next of kin, my mom. So I mean, Mesa County Sheriff's Office has been just utterly ridiculous. The thing is, Grandpa thought he was in danger. Or he feared for his safety and for his life. Uh, because of this motor that he invented. Now, if you think about it, why would anybody care about a magnetic motor? The only logical, the first thing that comes to mind, I guess, seems to me to be the only logical answer to that question would be the oil industry, you know, big oil. Um, so, but if you, if you take the view that the oil companies will protect their interests at all costs, and there's certainly plenty of evidence for that out there, um, then it starts to look possible that somebody w would wish 
harm upon my grandfather. Oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to get up those roads if it keeps like this. The reason this matters is that when I came back from the Navy in 2004, I worked briefly as a roustabout for an oil field company in Grand Junction, um, in the Grand Valley area. And um, I learned of a company called Dibble Trucking. Now Dibble Trucking is, is, is the kind of company that you would find in any oil field. Um, they deliver water, they, they're big on water trucks, they have a lot of water trucks. They, but they haul water and I'm sure they haul other things as well. Uh, so anyways, my medical marijuana guy, uh, his last name is the same as the trucking company and he works out of their building. So I'm assuming he's a family member, part of the, the Dibble dynasty. Um, and I'm not saying that they are evil or have anything to do um, with what happened, but, but what strikes me as odd is that I went to see my medical guy and I told him about how I was flying my drones and looking for my grandpa's car and he just out of nowhere said to me, oh yeah, I'm very familiar with that story. And it struck me as odd why anybody would be quote unquote very familiar with that story because all the news agencies, when they published the stories on his, his find, the findings of his remains, finding of his remains, um, they were all brief and had very, very little detail. Only one even named the person who found him. Um, so I had to dig a little there. My mom didn't believe he had even been named. Um, she went this whole time believing there was no way to know. Um, and so she didn't even believe me when I told her I had found him. Uh, the point is it struck me as odd and kind of scared me a little bit that this member of the Dibble family who has employees out in all of the oil fields, including the ones out here in Gateway by, John, John, uh, by and in John Brown Canyon, it's always possible that a little birdie told somebody the true story or saw it, witnessed it, overheard it, and won't come forward either out of fear or because they're complicit. And, you know, I'm not trying to say any, I'm not jumping to any conclusions. What I'm trying to do is look at the rope and, and try to see every thread, okay? Every strand. I got into a back and forth tweet with the Mason County Sheriff's Office recently because I tweeted about having found Grandpa's car with my drone and they came back on Twitter and said, by the way, you're always welcome to a copy of his case file. Well, long story short, I was a few steps ahead of that already. I had a third party retrieve the case file for me. It's a 45 page uh, file and they gave us approximately, what was it, 38 to 40? I don't have them here with me and I'm driving, but it, it was not the entire document, not the entire case file. Now the records clerk or officer who re released the case file to the third party that I had retrieved them, told third party, told said third party, that if there were pages missing, it would be due to the fact that federal agencies, and I believe they specifically mentioned the FBI, were involved in the investigation and that they didn't have authority locally to release those pages. It would have to be released through the investigating agency, which I believe they said was the FBI. FBI involvement, federal involvement in the case is only triggered by specific things, okay? But then another specific trigger for FBI involvement would be crimes involving um, security clearances, either classified documents or people with access to classified information. So again, the question is, what is so sensitive? What do they consider so sensitive in his file that they're gonna play this, we don't have authority to release th those pages game and that we now have to petition the FBI or whatever the agency turns out to be. Um, what, what triggered their involvement? That's what I wanna know.